CLG Neilin was incredibly close. And Cloud9 is losing against Tempo Storm right now. James, so what's you going can on? see, it looks like Tempo Storm really want to win this, my friend, because they are just ho literally holding in line like 300 then. Ooh. And they're going to lose. Sam got stabbed by two sides. He got he got taken to, into the alley. They should have gone for they a run boost. Wrecked. A run boost. Oh, over the top of the line. Oh, yeah. that'd be so awesome. You could actually, you know, you could actually do that because of the plant pop. You can even maybe hide it. Could work. Pull them back to the near the pump pot. <laughs> or you could just like away. someone could crouch. Yeah, but then they would see it coming. Come on. I think they're going to see it coming regardless. <laughs> yeah, very likely so. All right, guys, we are going to have the pistol round between Cloud9 and Tempo Storm. Cloud9 must win this map. It is Tempo Storm's choice. And if they do not, they're going to be knocked out here in the HTC Reborn Invitational. And there's no time for, for introductions here. They're just going in. So there's one more to find. They might assume that the bomb site is clear, but there's one more on the site. And But he's being forced back to the construction area. That is nothing. The guy who's been uh, pretty good for Cloud9 so far, although it hasn't been enough for him to take the map that they picked. Three versus two now. They have the help to do it. Just need to find the headshots, but it's going to be Rix to take down nothing, leaving Stroud in the one versus three. And now he is also capable, but... He plays very tagged as well. Look at the aim from Stroud. It's absolutely insane, this man. Two more. One more to find. And he does have a kit as well. I've seen a leg. Can he find oh, a frag? Yeah. No, so close. But he will not have the cigar. You can see that uh, Stroud has very good mechanics. I, I spent an hour on my stream today just explaining this, uh, these things, these habits that, that can allow to train aim like that. Because that's the most efficient style, I think. If you want to be a super top aimer. Um, either way, 1-0. Tempo Storm taking that pistol. We're going to see that P90 again. Rix, he's, he, he got three entries in that round for them. He's been doing amazing stuff. Rix, very on point here for Tempo Storm so far today. However, Shazam will receive a scout shot. And he's going to be down to 13 HP. So that sucks for him. And uh, Cloud9, they could very well do a pretty strong round here. It depends on how Tempo Storm actually approach this round. Because, again, they've got three, uh, two players, actually, and a decoy on B. That's actually... Do you think they're gonna think that's a decoy there because it's just shooting off? Because when you hear, a, a, you know, when you hear them just firing randomly, and then there'll be the explosion there, so that'll make it obvious it was a decoy. But that was kind of cute. Okay, so the Death by Kitty. I think that might be one of my favorite skins in the game, actually. But see, Rick's looking to have a blast. He wants, he wants to have a P90 party on Banana, but Cloud9 have other ideas. So they're going to prepare for the uh, counter nades. We've got mollies coming out for the side who are forcing things up. And Tempo Storm will just wait. They've got a molly of their own and a HE to play with. But only 30 seconds left on the clock. So the bomb stuck in the bottom, bottom of Banana. Two people top mid. They're going to have to push the site now. As they're going to run out of time here. Three players left for Cloud9. But none on the site save for one person in construction. Freakazoid, not going to get anything done here, so I think we're looking at a save. Although the uh, the scout's been lost as well. And Shroud's going to make a run for it. Yeah, Rick's this guy, he's, he's, uh, he's been one to keep an eye out for, actually. He's not necessarily a usual uh, standout from some of the matches we have seen. Of course, we haven't seen a huge amount of matches from uh, the Tempo Storm oh, recently. I remember the last time we watched them, it was all about Glorans with the auto sniper. He was <laughs> he was uh, using that to a level of efficacy I do not think I've ever seen previously. Using it to great effect, that's for sure. Yeah. So two zero for Tempo Storm. They have managed to avoid getting caught out by an eco, or sorry, a force by. Yeah, you can see Rick's on seven kills, everyone else on one. He's just going in for these entries, and he's doing a good job so far. Now it should be a lot easier. Just pistols, and just a P the only investment was a P two fifty here by Sean Gares. Uh, we'll have once again Rick's he has no fear. He has absolutely no fear. Just look at him go. He's got no one near him to trade. He's just going in. He wants all the kills. He yep. is making change. Ooh, nothing's gonna find a little though. Bomb has been that will uh, be potentially safe. Maybe he'll go for some extras, try to do some damage. But right now it's looking very strong. Oh, he's down to one HP as well. He's trying to get the escape going and Hades will get Skadoodle, so limited damage. Put on top of Tempo Storm in this round. Very limited damage indeed. And uh, 
We'll have to see whether or not this Galil is really going to amount so much. Looks like Hades will pick it off. So nice uh, triple kill for him, cleaning up these players. As Rix will throw away his gun, actually. And and, uh, and actually buy an AK into the next round. That's actually quite interesting. I'm not sure I've seen anyone throw away a gun at the end, at the end of a round, preempting that he's going to buy, you know, replace it with a, you know, a better weapon in the next round. Well, it's a sad goodbye. We wave to the P90 of Rix and all those... Uh, Weird looking kitties. So, three man push from Cloud9. They want to take firm control of Banana immediately. They want to take a, a chokehold on the Inferno map as they are done losing rounds here. They're done losing games as well. But Tempo Storm will want to impose their will onto the Cloud9 team. That's going to be a nice spray down in quad from Shroud to start things off. Going to get flanked through apps from Shazam and Co. They're going to apply pressure towards, towards Arch as well. So, Tempo Storm in a strong position. However, they're going to need to hold versus the remaining three players here from Cloud9 who want their demands met. That these positions are really good from Tempo Storm. They've got a guy in Graveyard, which is very strong for the guys coming from Arch. They've got a guy in Pit, which is very good against the players coming out quad. They've got a guy inside for the Arch, uh, for apartments, but it's going to be the. Uh Graveyard guy going down straight away, Rix with a nice double as the guy's coming from Arch. And once again, it seems like even though Cloud9 got a great start there, Shroud with the double spray down, it's not happening for, for Cloud9 at the moment. They're going to have to eco again. And Tempo Storm actually taking economic control in this match. They should get a free round here. And look at the deaths. They've got a very, very low amount of deaths going on. So not much economic damage sustained across the rounds that they have won. And they should get another clean one here. We'll have to see how things do turn out in the end. But... We have the P90 back, but it's not on uh, on on, on Rix. Oh, but Stanislaw has an inferior skin. Indeed, he has. He's skinless. That he is without skin. So he's going to be opening the party here for the CT side. Not as effective as Rix. They're going to get traded immediately by Cloud9, and they're going to have a third player heading over, or should I say, a fourth, since one's gone down, heading over towards the B bomb site, leaving almost a clean A. Player in uh, second mid for the CTs should get the information, and indeed he will. We're seeing a fast rotation from one of the Cloud9 players. In fact, the rest are joining the party as well. So, still looking good for Tempo Storm here on this anti-eco. Skadoodle has now picked up the P90, and Sean Garros has picked up the, uh, well, he's got a CZ. So, they could potentially try and get some sneaky exit plays here, where they could try and uh, save some weapons. In fact, it seems that is what is exactly going to happen here. Although Shazam is flanking the flank, and he will find Sean Grails and take him down. So only the P90 to find now, and he's on the opposite side of the site to the T's. So they should be safe from the P90, but it looks like it may rear its ugly head in the following round. Yeah, I, this is completely fine for Tempo Storm. And again, they lost only one player, so they're not even really being punished all that much as far as economy goes. We're going to see their money now as uh, the next round begins. Show me the money! That is, that is really good, because... Now Cloud9, even if they win this round... We can see the money without the kill screen here. T uh, Tempo Storm can can actually just keep buying. And even if they lose multiple rounds in a Cloud9 like building economy, Bomb Plants plus uh, loss bonus, they're just going to keep being able to buy for a long time. So Tempo Storm have done so much to position themselves well in this match to suffer losses but continue their dominance and uh, destabilize Cloud9. We have the, uh, the Orp on Skadoodle, so... This should be where things look up for Cloud9. This is where Skadoodle could deliver on the Orb shots. We should have a good setup between Nothing and Shroud on Quad. And oh no, instantly taken down. Shroud is going to lose his head. And Stanislaw is going to cut off Rikazoid. They're going to wrap in onto the B-bomb site. Just charging in. What an opening found by his Tempo Storm. But a bomb needs to move quickly. Rix, why is he walking? He's got no one to help him if he loses a bomb here. And he's going to get away just in time because Cloud9 are already on the save. This is looking like a complete disaster. Zero to six, Dan, on the CT side. You can see Tempo Storm, they seem to badly want to start on the CT side. Obviously, expecting to have a dominant side, but they could not ask for more here. Heading towards a 6-0 versus Cloud9 with a surprise 1-0 up from the previous map as well. I mean, this is not looking good here this, for Cloud9. Yeah, this is, I don't know. I mean... Skidoo will save his AWP, but the biggest thing for Cloud9 right now is to main, maintain composure because this stuff can happen. This stuff absolutely can happen. You, you can't be throwing blame. You can't be letting the morale dip. You, mu you must at all times be just be taking it around for around, making the right calls, and playing the situation. 
that is at hand. I'm not thinking any further into into the future. And uh, hopefully, you know, Cloudline, they've got a lot of experience on them, a lot of international experience. And they've got the leadership, good leadership. They've got uh, well-grounded and, 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 you know, well-experienced individuals. So I, I feel like in that, in that regard, they should be fine. But if there is a problem, we don't, well, they don't even know if there's a problem yet. It can just be Tempo Storm just heading their shots. Cloud9, uh, let's see what they go with this time. We have a uh, lot of there from Tempo Storm towards Car, which would slow a push from them, which might suggest that Tempo Storm want to go up uh, mid really fast and kind of hide it by not uh, having anyone on banana. Interesting smoke there from Stanislaw. Looks like it's to cut off the side of the site as opposed to library itself or the arch. And uh, they're going to find frags indeed. Yeah, that's exactly where they smoke That is a nice smoke completely closing out the arch players. Completely closing out the arch players. And they go for the re-smoke. So, Tempo Storm have come prepared for this map. And again, Cloud9 are forced to retreat here. They are just losing ground round after round after round. Is this one of like one of those days is this one of those things uh, where you can't ascribe or quantify a specific reason as to what is happening because cloud nine going down zero to seven on the ct side is going to put them in a very poor position uh, obviously you know in in this match of course tempo storm they be they're more and more favored every every round they take on the t side at this point because six rounds is already pretty good on your t side and they still have a strong economic control. This so is not a poor position, Dan. This is a horrific position. Yeah, this. I like how Hades is, AK is called Ares as well. That is a very nice touch. You, by the way, you also get more money for the bomb exploding than for elimination. So we saw three bombs exploding in a row. So it's just, it just pumps up their economy more and more and more. It's like a $250 dis difference or so. And they're not, not too huge. Show me the money. It all counts at the end of the day when you start losing rounds, Dan. Yeah, we're only halfway in, so you know this could still end 8-7. Don't be, don't think this is over just yet. And, Clan, and uh, Skadoodle getting the first frag for his team again. While it's 0-7 right now, this could end 8-7. It's possible. Yeah, it's, it's very, very smart. Oh, sorry, it's very uh, good that Skadoodle's not afraid to peek and to use his skill. Because this is one of the first things that happens when you... Uh, this is an inexperienced player sort of thing. that, And it can happen to people on the top level. It can be hard to overcome where you... You start losing, you start losing confidence because you feel like every round you lose, at this point where it's already 0-7 on your CT side, it, it, it gets so bad. Like you feel so, so bad. And if it's your fault, like you feel even worse. You, you get afraid. You start being outcome-oriented instead of just using your skill as you're supposed to and taking the gambles as you're supposed to. And we saw Skadoodle there. He was not afraid to use his skill and take the gamble. And he, he uh, made a payoff. So Cloud9 with the man advantage. But it looks like we're going to see a play on 2-8. B, sorry. Okay, so we've got these standard mollies coming in. Sean Grill's hiding behind the uh, fountain there, and that's going to net him some kills. Teammates not afraid to stand in the fire here, and that's going to be a nice cleanup. And now Cloud9 may get some momentum on their side. It's the first round on the board here, but again, they could still finish this half in the lead, and that's something that they could be aware of themselves and should be aware of themselves. So they will have all the motivation they need to continue in this round. And I expect that they're going to want to uh, shut down Banana, although they've only got two people going towards B, so maybe they've played a bit more passive after the nades and mollies. Indeed, we have all the standard nades coming in. But again, look at Tempo Storm with the Molotov onto the balcony area. They're expecting aggression from the CTs. Yeah, it's a good way to get back in, definitely. Indeed, they have the smoke at the bottom of Banana, so they're going to close things out there as they need to, as they must. Okay, so this is actually something new from Cloud9 because they have some money to play with now. So they're like, okay, we can we can spend some money, we can get some incendiaries, and they're using them pretty effectively by taking banana control and being able to play a fourth player to more towards NA rotate, not actually on A, but on CT floating. But oh, Shazam goes in! Oh, they both missed the shot. That is scary for both sides right there because if either one had died, yeah, that is. Uh, I think they both had quite, quite the fright. That yeah. could be a round changing frag. And uh, Shazam is going to make a mistake and get punished by Skadoodle for it. So that's going to be entry into the A sites. Severely, li severely limited. 30 seconds remain here for Tempo Storm to make a push. And the commitment to the B bomb site is real. So we've got the flames into new box down for Freakazoid. And he will fall, but he'll take somebody down first. 
get the information for his team as well. The B site being swarmed by Tempo Storm there at a man disadvantage. Sean Grill's trying to get a, fr a frag through the smoke. It will not happen though, but they have the numbers game, they have the kits, they have two flashbangs. And it's not going to be easy for Tempo Storm to hold this. Not going to get flashed through. It's going to be good. He's going to pick up a double as Hades is at the back. And he's going to get one before going down. But the bomb is planted. And this is what I was talking about before. The uh, Tempest Storm built up so much money that when they start losing runs consecutively, well, okay, they just lost uh, a second in a row there. So that's going to be uh, $1,900 plus the 800 that they get for the, the plant. So 2700 there. Look at their money. It still looks amazing. Even though they lost two in a row, and then again, if they get the bomb down again, plus the, the bonus for the next loss, they're going to get like 3200 for that. So they're going to be having so much cash all the time that uh, bomb plants are going to be a huge objective. Um, either way, 2-7, to seven, the cloud line starting the comeback trail, but how, where does the comeback trail lead? How far does it go? All right, so the T is going for some early aggression. And this is what I thought they should have done in the previous round, but we'll come back to that in a minute, as the spray down is going to go completely in the favor of Cloud9. That is a nuclear winter there at the hands of Cloud9. What a shutout. Absolutely unreal stuff. But I really feel like Tempo Storm should have done that in the previous round, because if you think about it, Cloud9 have no choice. They have to try and close down Banana. And Tempo Storm had the money to go for the attrition there, even if they don't lose it. If they do severe damage to Cloud9 and, and something like that happens in the end, then it's still a lot of pressure on the C2 yep. economy. But maybe you know, that, that obviously was less than ideal. Yeah. They, that spray down was immense. Th there's actually the inverse position that we were talking about where you lose a lot, that you get outcome oriented. The, the same thing can happen on the inverse, where you win a lot and you start to get complacent. There is the two, two sides of the coin here, two opposites. And it's going to be Shazam who gets the entry onto nothing. This could end up being pretty good, but Shroud is going to hold. Skadoodle gets the shot long range, but in comes the Onslaught. It is unrelenting. In comes the Tech 9 as well from Stannis Law, and they are refragging so well onto Cloud 9 over by A. It's going to leave everything on the shoulders, the very capable shoulders. Or very well sculpted, sh sculptured shoulders of Sean Gares as he moves in from the apartments area. I'm gonna get a pause coming in, but it's gonna be very hard with this kind of a setup. They are surrounding him right now, looking for the the double peak. Just gonna play with him, toy with him, and oh, the Tech Nine. It's gonna soften him up, and Hades will finish him off. And they're gonna call for, call for a pause. And I wonder if this is a tactical pause here. Well, they've got the money to buy. And uh, the unpause should be coming in soon. So, going to get all the toys again. Cloud9 building uh, some bank with the money from the previous round. But most importantly, that spray down on Banana. That scorched earth round. So, a five round deficit now. With three rounds. Four rounds remaining. This is 12 or 15. So, we'll see if they can bring it to 7-8 in favor of Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm just charging like a bull on roller skates did, down a hill. Did Tempo Storm, do they actually have no money now? Do they spend all their money? Wow. They don't have any money here. If Cloudline win this round, they reset Tempo Storm. And Tempo Storm kind of have to double eco with that low amount of money. So, this could be it. Cloudline have to win this round. If Cloudline can win this round, this round then they can, they can get the 8-7. It is very possible. If they lose this one, then I don't know, James. I don't know what's going to happen. But Sean Gares is going to start things off. He's going to lead by example. Okay, so, yeah, that's a nice frag by him. And Shazam, you can see he was holding the angle in mid. Then started moving up banana where two of his teammates were. Then went back to mid. And now, we'll see if he can get an opening. But that smoke is basically going to deny him unless he gets some kind of boost in. So he needs to go back. And find an angle somewhere. It might boost him on the loss, I don't know. But there's a frag through the smoke. That's going to cause a rotation. You can see Skadoodle on his way to the B bomb site now. The smokes are in place. And Sean Guys is going to manage to get a smoke out and find a frag anyway. That nade is going to be very nice indeed. And uh, Skadoodle doing work there with the flames. Going to get two players with the flames. This round has fallen apart for Tempo Storm. They've only killed one player. And as you said, their money is very, very likely to be reset here as they will have the basic, the uh, bottom rung of the ladder, loss bonus. Shazam with all of two HP is soon to die.
Oh, they're going to try to kill him off the time. He's got to go and die here. And he knows it. He's going to go straight. And look at this. They're trying not to... Oh, my God. So well done by Cloud9. That's, that's so important. That's, that's Look at the money. That's so insanely important. That is the most bizarre situation I've ever seen. That's like... It's like Skidoodle... Uh, Shazam jumps into pool. And they all just start jumping around like someone's playing um, some Bass Hunter or something. Jump around. And then, and then, and then the bell up. goes off and they just turn around and shoot him in the head. Jump up and get down. <laughs> that, that was hilarious. Yeah. That's, that's very well done. That's so, so good though. That's super good. That None of them died either. Yeah. It's like, okay, you, you, you sit there. We're just going to jump around. Oh, the time's going out. You're dead. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for playing. Very nice indeed. And that, again, is so important because Tempo Storm's money got reset and... So Zam's going to have absolutely nothing. He's going to be behind the scene with nothing to play with. So we could very well see the 7-8, and that could mean Cloud9 can reclaim not only comfort but control. But having rounds like this, where you're fragging them on the eco, you're building the money, you don't feel the pressure as much because you, you feel like, okay, if I die, then you know someone can drop me. You know That's okay. I can, you know, can start playing a little bit more loose, and the, the, the pressure comes off a little bit. Um, of course, the buy is going to come out from Tempo Storm and Shazam's on the measly Tech 9 there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have see what they can pull out the bag now because I feel like Cloud9 are going to be looking stronger and stronger as this match progresses now. Indeed, they are powering up. So, we have a semblance of an execute from the T side. Flames in the middle and uh, an opening frag. The Raptor Bomb is headed over towards Sean Garrett and he's going to find the frag. And now the uh, it's going to be the T's pinched between CT's on A and CT's on B with the bomb in CT spawn. What a bizarre situation. Sean Garrett's going to just smoke off the truck area. So they have Tempo Storm. Nowhere to go. Their clock is going to be burned. The bomb is seen again by Cloud9 with that frag. And uh, there's only two players left. So this is a disaster. For Tempo Storm, that's all that can be said. Much, much better. And again, uh, one of the things you have to bear in mind, especially when you're when you're down and out, is oh, did you see the barrel there? I think you may have done, but it might not count for much. I think you got. Sp I think I just a few uh, a few spam shots there, but Shroud will get the right place and get the kill. But yeah, I mean, this is something one you know, of the reasons why you need to maintain your composure at all points because sometimes variance gets you. This is another thing I learned when I when I tried at a, at a stint at, uh, at poker, taking it very seriously. Sometimes variance gets you. You have to understand that, and you have to not let it affect you in the short term or the long term, because that's just the nature of the beast. There is always going to be variance. Sometimes they're going to hit their shots. Sometimes they're going to pick the right. They're going to gamble with the right strat. They're just the kind of strat to what you're doing. And Skadoodle's going to go in. Oh wow, the smoke off there. I think that was from a teammate as well. But that's going to cover him nicely for that peek onto second mid, and he's going to fall back away with a huge banana grin on his face. Yeah, now Tempo Storm have little to no map control. No, there's, a, there's an opportunity on Arch, but it's more or less a bait because Skadoodle is ready and waiting, and there is a frag onto Rick. So only three Tempo Storm players left. No primary guns on the team. That's a nice flash coming in, which will get them close onto the site. They could find a few frags here, and maybe even get a bomb plant, but they'll need more than that. It is the last round. They need to take the round. They've picked up an AWP onto Glorins. Three versus three, and the CTs are charging in. They've got an M4 as well, so things starting to get better. Shazam stuck in no man's land, however, and he is surely going to ta get taken out eventually here by Freakazoid. Two players remaining on the site, and that's going to be a missed shot and a snap. And Cloud9 will clean up the remainder of the team and make it to 8-7 after going, was it 7-0 down? Uh, yes. 7-0 down to 8-7 from Cloud9. That yep. is a... Formidable, a remarkable recovery. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 also going to be a situation where you don't want to go out with tournament to tempo storm. It's like a that just doesn't look good. No, for a, 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 a team of of such repute as Cloud9, whether or not they have the new players or not, they're going to hold themselves to a standard that is that is higher than their perceived um, or how how they how well they perceive their opponents. Which is no no diss at all to tempo storm. I think everyone can understand that. So we have the pistol now going into the second half, and Cloud9 going to be wanting to start this off as well as Rix did for uh, for Tempo Storm. I have to see if Rix can go huge again and get the P90 out. That's what we want to see. Okay, there's one frag. There's two. He's got support and more bullets. He's going to assist for the third frag 
frag onto the uh, Cloud9 team. So it's only Sean Gares and nothing versus five. They need to find headshots. They're finding headshots, but they're going in the wrong direction. Only nothing remains. He wants the 1v1s. He's got himself one. McLaurin's just going to run in and finish him off there. Solid CT half from Tempo Storm. Uh, sorry, pistol round. This is the half they wanted to start on. You could see that by just a wall of knives in the knife round. They've gone off to the start they wanted with the with winning the pistol. And uh, now they're going to go straight for the M4s and two players. Shazam and Stanislaw will opt for the MP7s, the money makers. It's, it's going to be the B play though. We've got the triple Molotov from Cloud9. This can only be the B execute. Now, what did Tempo Storm have there? They've got uh, seven and nines. They've got uh, Rix and they've got Stanislaw there. So they've got an M4 and a smoke and an MP7 and a kit as well on that site. Which that's actually the only kit that they have. Which is that's kind of surprising actually. To only have one kit here, that could be problematic. No, no money. But there's still the triple Molotov, so they must be the B execute. New oh. boxes, first oranges, and Leia uh, has been spotted by the CTs. But no rotation yet. Ooh, Rick's gonna pick off Freakazoid. This is not never good if you're gonna go for an execute, and they must swarm in numbers. They're and really they're spread out. out. Yeah. They are really spread out. I'm surprised by that. So what is the plan here? Three smokes, three Molotovs. What is the plan? Cloud nine. It has, just has to be a B execute, but as you say, they were spread out. I think they wanted to give the uh, they wanted Tempo Storm to respect that they could be anywhere, but they're losing players. If the if the goal is a quick execute, that's one of the mollies and smokes yeah. gone. That's the problem when you're when you're playing across the map like that. You just want to get in there. They had a free banana as well. They could just go for it at any point. But they've lost a bunch of players here. I'm not sure what they're looking for, but it's going to be Stanislaw is close with the MP7. In comes the peak. It only takes one player down, but there are only three to start with. Rix will easily spray down the rest. And you've got to wonder what the, the plan was for Cloud9, because with the free smokes and three Molotovs, it, it, it screamed be execute. But we didn't see it be execute, James. We saw two guys die over towards Aaps. Yeah, that is, I agree with everything you basically said. <laughs> like they spent yes. the money, they spent the money for an execute, then uh, ended up handicapped. Yeah, very, very. It's uh, like kind of cognitive dissonance sort of thing. So, after a, a round of a massive question mark on it, Tempest Storm have a three-round lead, and we have Cloud9 on the eco. This time there will be two P250s and nothing else. Yeah, that's th that last round was uh, such an opportunity to get damage in a bomb plant, and then they can immediately pressure the economy, the CTs, and that is half the battle on this uh, on this map. We saw what the situation was like when Cloud9 couldn't get their economy going. They lost seven rounds in a row on the CT side, and that's what happens on Inferno when you don't have the money to play with the AWP and with the with the relevant grenades, smokes, and incendiaries. But Uskadoodle, oh, that could have been a frag actually. Stanislaw was. Out there in the open, with no support, directly at least. But it was not to be this time. So what is the plan here for Cloud9? They're waiting for an overextension. They yep. almost had one there, but yep. I don't think Tempo Storm will make the same mistake. The smoke's starting to come out now for the CT side. Stanislaw still has one more, so they could waste a hell of a lot of time here with that final uh, molly, which has now been thrown. Yeah, it's, you're looking for just getting a couple kills here. You don't have the power to get the bomb down. It's very unlikely with this, with this one spot. And Shazam only has the Tech-9 here. He's saving for the orb. He doesn't really want to die, but they're going to go in. And he's going to be ev eliminated eventually. But they only have the Tech-9 to pick up, so that actually ends up being very good for Tempo Storm. The Skadoodle gets finished off here by the USP of Florins. He's not dying just yet. But in it, there it is. Um, so... Yeah, very rough round, because had they got the bomb down, they could have actually invested more into that round. Even if they didn't fall by, they could have maybe got like a few Tech-9s, maybe some grenades, and they could have continued that pressure. But Tempo Storm, straight away they got the AWP, straight away they got incendiaries. But I uh, have to see if that's going to pay off for them or not. Cloud9, full AKs, full, close to full grenades. I'm curious to see if Tempo will try for a fast crush of the uh, T economy or if they'll try play more passive. They're playing on the site on B, so not interested in having an argument for it in Banana. That's going to be the uh, the standard NIP smoke on the corner there. I which saw, can um, be thrown from CT spawn. Uh, sorry, I, I saw as Freakazoid previously, his uh, entry abilities onto B are actually pretty strong. So we'll probably see him going for the entries a lot. And the lack of execute in that round that looks so clear makes me not expect any executes, James. 
We'll have to see what Cloud9 have to play with in that regard. Yeah, and we need to see why Tempo Storm picked this map. Although, oh yeah, although they had a great T side, I think it's the CT side that is the uh, the jewel in the crown for them. And At the least in their perception. And he just got picked up, and there's 45 seconds left. Tempo Storm not really ever extending anywhere. But the other thing is that. Um, there's not a lot of pressure from, from Cloud9. Tempo Storm could have saved their grenades a little bit more because the pressure just hasn't been there. They haven't even walked into mid yet, and there's 35 seconds left, but all the nades are gone already for Tempo Storm. They're going to go up, though. Hades going to get one. The trade comes in. Great angle for Shazam. Picks up the shot. He's going to be careful. They will be trying to refrag, but he's actually going to back away in time. Now Shroud over there gets the insta-kill onto Glorin. So important, but in comes Shazam from the side. He is in close on the bomb site with that AWP. Not going to wait for his two teammates to go for the rotate, and now that's going to make it a two-on-two. Cloud9 could very well pull this one out the bag. All right, so Cloud9 in control of the pit area. There is a Molotov on Rix. If he can find an angle to throw it, he's going into the apps, and there comes the Molotov. But it's coming too late as his teammates gone down. There will be a trade through from the Molly. He should see the shadow of Stroud there, and he will find the frag wow. as well. Ten second defuse coming in. I think he's got it. It's really tight though. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he's just about. That is nuts. Th that's so crazy. What do you think about Shazam going into the site there with the AWP? Like, just pulling out the pistol and running? Because he's got two teammates coming around who can go from quad. Yeah, it might, be, it might be an overextension there because he could potentially play from the opposite corner of the site and hold an angle yeah. on the left with the box covering him from the right. Because he stops a, a guy going into pit or coming out of pit with that. He can, like, pin them down. Yeah, and it also just quite. generally waste time yeah. because they need to be conscious of him being alive rather than being... Rather than him being dead while the rotation comes in. Yeah. It's going to work out for them on that occasion. That's a great pick from Skadoodle. He knows what t is to be expected from the Orpa. Going to have the wide peak there in Vietnam and take the frag. So, Cloud9, not out of this just yet. Two fast frags towards the A site, and now Tempo Storm are in an interesting situation. There is a Lurker on the Banana at the moment. That's nothing, and he's going to take down Stanislaw. So, it's two versus five, and all of a sudden, Tempo Storm are on the back foot. Maybe not even on their foot, on their backs. So they seem to have uh, just been completely run over here by Cloud9. Yeah, they just went for the, the full run and gun and uh, no nades. And that's one of the things is you know that Cloud9 have great, great individual skills. So in this round, they just decided, hey, guys, let's not make it complicated. Let's just use the individual skills. And uh, I think, it's, I think they, they knew that there was pressure on the CT economy based on how many players Tempo Storm lost in the previous round. Because look mm -hmm. at their money now. I think that's going to be a massive factor into the decision making on that round. Yeah, it's going to be uh, a save now for Tempo Storm, the first time we already see this. They're going to go five men towards Banana. It looks like a knife round, but no, it's not, guys. If you're just joining us, this is 8-12, Cloud9 down, but not out just yet. But uh, they probably will be on the receiving end of a day's video after that pistol round on the T-side. I, I was... Hashtag, I was, there will be a day's video. I was thinking of that, but not, <laughs> not for the pistol round, but for other things. Okay, yeah, there is a lot of other things, I guess. you can always There can always be day's videos, James, on everything. Everything in life. But uh, the great thing I love about stacks is that even if they don't go B, you can still have a five-person exit strategy for damage. And that, like, in of itself, if you really... Because with a round like this, you do not ever expect to win the round. You're not necessarily... You're not actually... You shouldn't really, I think, think about rounds like this. You shouldn't be playing to win the round. You should be gambling heavily where winning the round can be likely, like a stack. That's kind of what a stack is, a definition of a stack. But if, if that doesn't happen, then you get the very likely situation of going for exits by just surrounding them as Trying they... to steal weaponry. Yeah, as they go out for the bombs. So that, that's one of the reasons why I really love stacks, because it also looks cool, you know, everyone running around together as, uh, you know, as, as a pack. The Flying V. You just want to be one of, one of the boys, Dan. One of the, one of the lads. The lads out on the streets of Inferno <laughs> with... with uh, with a sidearm. But this is the cool thing, like you said, you can steal a weapon away. It, it does become a little bit more likely, because instead of a bunch of players swarming onto a site, you see them trying to escape different areas. I've got to say something really important here. Yeah. Freak's way is, um, his peek in the apps is very important because you can see where they're going yes. to save in this corner. Yeah. Him peeking the app stops someone. Do you remember that time when Get Right was yeah, in the apps yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Molotov? And yes. he Molotov the area, they all had to run away, then they all died to yes. the bomb. It was glorious. That was amazing. Freakazoid's position there stops any such shenanigans from happening later on when it's too late for them to move away from the bar. Yep. Yeah, that was, that's, that's very, very, very good It's a small detail, point. and it's a very important one. Yeah, it's, it's the implications are actually massive because that blows up the exit 
uh, damage strategy for Tempo Storm. So 12 to 9 and Cloud9 back in this, economically speaking. Tempo Storm having to go for another save, but they got five HEs. Gonna go for the banana play with those. Oh no, we've got players going up banana here for Cloud9. Where are the HEs gonna land? Oh, they completely whiff, actually, it would seem. I actually think we get a late one there, which does do some good damage, but uh, not the kind of damage that they wanted. They wanted the frag out of that, and with five HEs invested, you kind of expect that that, could be, that should be an outcome. But Hades in the smoke, close with the dig. He's looking for a quick shot onto the, one of these players as they move forwards. And he might just get free because I delivered an AK-47. Thank you very much. Blah, blah. That's the sound of my gut. And we got a really good situation for Tempo Storm because now they got an AK. And it was a save anyway. It was a light... Well, they, they uh, tried to buy within probably 2 to 3k dollars, judging by the diffuse armor uh, smoke 5.7 on Glorian. So we can quickly check the money there as we have no engagements. Yeah, so yeah, just trying to save within 3k dollars, which is kind of important. There's uh, some maps where you can try to save within 2k dollars. Maps where strategies and options for the CTs on lower economy can be have a higher percentage chance of happening. So on rounds, so you can get more uh, pressure into more of the rounds, basically. But this is a map where CTs, you do want to, to try to, to always have 3k and above in situations like this one, where you can then have the orbs get all the nays, all that, all that goodness. This is as good as this looks for Cloud9 of all this momentum and so on. This is still a very precarious situation. In mm. fact, for both teams now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We are, we are in dangerous waters, people. Well, wait, how was Cloud9? And there are no armbands remaining, Dan. Oh no. So you got to better learn to swim. I suck at swimming. Um, well, I didn't actually look at Cloud9's money, but they must have a fair amount of change. Yeah, so and they didn't lose anybody in this The round point either, is, so though, they are on the less favoured side here. Yeah. And it's not hard for the uh, CTs to get some momentum. And, uh, and that's the kind of disruption we were just mentioning in that corner. You can see he's trying to tag the players down so they die. Got one of them. The other one did survive. But you can see these people have the intentions of bastards, Dad. Murderous intents. Infidels. Well, let's see if uh, Watch Shazam will, will uh, arrive upon here. He's going to go really passive at the moment. Really, really, really passive. We do see a lot of Warpers going for at least a shallow peak on middle, um, on some more shallow angles if they get brave. At least. But then they are getting brave indeed, and you can see why that, that adaptation from Shazam may have been a good decision as he is going to get uh, aggressively peaked straight away. And actually, I think that's actually quite good. If you can get an early pick on mid, you can turn that into very fast control because then the crossfire disappears and the quad or an arch guy has to fall back. Dan, there's a shark in the waters and a shark's name is Skadoodle. We really need a flash there for the CTs. Maybe we don't. Stanislaw going to get two frags. Skadoodle is down. Rix has been taken as a trophy by the Cloud9 players. And uh, Freakzoid is going to run in and just get hit by the bowling ball there. Didn't have much HP. However, finally, his teammates get a frag. Shazam could really get an important frag for his team here. That, that fire is going to make it hard for him to see through. Very difficult to see through the uh, smoke and the flames there. And he's not going to get the pick with the orb, but he will with the 5-7. But they actually have an incendiary as well. They could actually lock Sean Gares out of the position. There it is. Was it, is it good though? He, he can run through it. He gets the quick shot. Oh, he gets burned. Oh, that was perfect indeed. It will come into play to a glorious effect. And that's going to be a very nice round won by Tempo Storm, but not without its losses. They they will get the grab the AWP and that can go back to Shazam. But... Uh, yeah, they lost everyone. So they're actually in a situation where it could be helpful for Cloud9. Because Cloud9, um, whilst they lost a round, that's going to reset Tempo Storm's bonus. And Tempo Storm have to spend all their cash right now. So Cloud9 can definitely make their way back into this. And for their sakes, they better do that. Because they lost map number one. To If you're just joining us, I'm sure you'd be surprised to learn that. But Cloud9 are a map down in this best of three in this quarterfinal for the HTC Reborn Invitational. And we have some light pressure towards Banana from Cloud9 in the beginnings of this round. And that's a very nice call on a Molotov by you, sir. So, I said it was dangerous for Cloud9. While they have the money, it's Tempo Storm who have the round. Wow. The boost coming in onto Stanislaw, and he may live to regret that. Although he will die and regret it on this occasion. We have the T's solidly moving into the B bomb site here. The uh, CTs have gone for the full retreat, and they are backing up very much so. Yeah, they, so they can't I'm afford to, to lose the guns here. Yeah, it looks like they are in fact just going for a straight up save. We have a lurker, however, in Sean Gares, who is around the CT apps. They so he may try to cause some trouble. He might hear them. I don't know if they're running in quad. But Sean is seeking 
Yeah, they need to really take a strong setup here because they, they, they cannot afford to lose a single weapon. Their economy is, is in that that way and oh they might they will never expect him to be here he's gonna get a snap onto ricks and his presence will be announced now sean gares can apply constant pressure and everyone knows where they are now so they're going to be charging into this position oh and the molotov is going to cause so much in the way of depositioning and cloud nine are on on this uh this push right now onto the b bomb site to uh, a bomb site to just eliminate all these players it is going their way quick flick from shazam can it be saved right now in goes sean gares for the finishing spray and it's going to be an excellent cleanup and we can see the difference it's now made. That has changed things dramatically for Cloud9. Sean Grills going into the A-bomb site, ruining lives, leaving economies in tears. That man is a one. He's a one-man recession, Dad. The the crazy thing was the player on on uh, at dark was it? I think on the B-bomb site. I don't ever. I, it's very rare that I see anyone play that spot. When people try that pick, you just, you just never see it happen on the logs with the or, or with the op because there's almost no reason to actually stand there um, early into the rounds. So. Uh, we have to see if they can recover on this uh, these ecos. They're gonna have to eco again. Cloud9 are gonna have a 13-13. They shouldn't shouldn't go any other way here. And they could buy, but I I don't think that it's smart on Inferno when they have another round to play with. So they're gonna go with some HEs. I think that's kind of nice. Get a get a get a few pistols in there, some HEs. That that makes sense. Yeah, the player on B. It is. It seems he was trying to take Cloud9 by surprise, but I mean he jumped up onto someone's head to take that shot. Yeah. And he. I don't even. I'm not even sure if he fired a bullet. Yeah, it's actually, I actually saw the tear in that guy's eye as he his, his head was in the scope before he died. Yeah, sad music started to play. Again, the CT's looking for Rush there. Shazam with a consolation frag as Cloud9 have evened things up. Did that frag on the back, on the new box, did that frag lose tempo storm the game? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that, the, the, I mean... It, I don't know. I, f I feel like losing a guy there early in the round is is somewhat needless because th you don't have to you don't have to be positioned. I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things that I'll let Dave's video. Let's see did, if did the talking James. Let's see if they can hold here. Yeah. Tempo Storm still with an opportunity to go for the two zero, but they must keep their resolve. They must hold their nerve. Oh, the bait comes in. Perfect angle there. She's then going to have the pop flash into the pool area, but they're going to avoid it. And Sean Gares is going to take down Stanislaw on the site. Cloud9 now in full. Wow, that was a very nice snap by Shazam. So this is not over yet. He's still got control. He's been naded. He is gone. Man advantage here for Cloud9. They've got the smokes up. They've got more mollies. They've got two mollies, in fact, and another smoke. So Tempo Storm looking very unlikely to be able to do anything here, Dad. Yeah, with these nades, as you said, there should, in theory, be no possibility. They're funneling them through into the smoke, into the fire. There's no way they'll even ever have time after all these nades go away to do any damage at all. So they're going to have to go back and save again. And Cloud9 are right back in this. They are going to take the lead for the first time in a very, very long Inferno match. And so they are going to be feeling so much better than when they were down 0-7. But it's, it's definitely not over just yet. And uh, I'm not sure actually on the overtime rules, but this is a situation where Tempo Storm could have considered playing for the overtime. Because you're in a situation where your buy sucks, basically. It, it compared to, I mean, it, it depends on how much value you weigh that Shazam has impact-wise with the AWP, because some teams have it on Orpa, that makes a massive difference. Um, well, Tempo Storm are all in here. They will still have some semblance of a buy because of their loss bonus in the next round if they do not prove victorious here, but Cloud9 take the lead. Just one mistake, punished. And uh, it had a ripple effect, which has caused shockwaves yeah. in the uh, CT economy. And this is what they are left with, two M4s. Two Femasses and the Deagle. It, it is cool to, to not go for the, the, the double save because you get two chances instead of one. But it's you have two, two crappy chances. And that's it depends on the style of the team, uh, basically. Yeah, and this is, this is the kind of situation where I think maybe uh, the European teams would get the pop flashes coming out onto Banana yeah. for the CTs. Try and get like a one, two, maybe even three man spray down. This is it though. This mid push, how depending on how clean this mid push is, and they actually have a player who's got no support up on mid. I think it's uh, is it Stanislaw or Shazam? The, I guess Shazam, but he's got to be careful not to just get straight up killed here with no no possible possibility to team play with anyone. 
because the best he can get is one frag, I think. Uh, that would be really lucky. And, oh, Hades is going to get caught there. Just trying to go for a quick one dig, and it did not happen. And leave uh, Glorian's in a very hard spot. Actually, there's nobody else there just yet, but he will get caught from the side as Cloud9 go for that wrap. And it looks really good here for Cloud9 right now. Retake with three players. Tempo Storm, they still have a chance. They've got three kits as well. Yeah, so Shazam went back into the arch, hiding behind the pillar there, which basically gave Cloud9 free reign of arch, which made Glorians go down, but he's uh, taken down Freakazoid now, so they have the push. They've all got kits here. Skoodle surely going to get a frag onto Mini Pit there, and indeed he will. The clock is running down, but there's one more to find. It's the 1v1, oh. and Skadoodle is going to take Shazam oh my God. through the corner. Did he jump no scope? Did he jump no scope I there, or did I he clip onto the edge and get a solid I don't solid think he shot? jumped, but I, th I, th I, th I think it might have been a no scope. The, 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 first, the second kill he got in the round. Oh, no idea. Because before the last one, yeah, I think he jumped no scoped or just got onto the corner of the box. That's also possible from, from there. So either way, pretty amazing from Skidule, as you'd expect. And they are on game point. And again, Cloud9, they need to win this to force it to a third map, which would be Dust2. And... Uh, we might even see a Glorian's Auto Sniper if we get to a Dust 2, so that could be fun. Yeah, we will have to see how it goes. Difficult times. Difficult times there, and it's a shame Tempo uh, Glorian's got flanked through Arch while Shazam was stuck in uh, on the wrong side of Arch, behind the pillar and C2 spawn. Yeah. By design from Cloud9's grenades, and that is the risk. But Hades as well. Getting uh, taken out there. Oh, wow, they're going to go aggressive. Um, crazy stuff there. Trying to find a, a, go a big gamble for a big reward, which yeah. you've you got to do that in this spot. It's desperate which times. Desperation, Dan. It smells yeah. of desperation. Desperate times, desperate measures. And I do like, I do like that you, know, you, have, you have to find something. You've got to find a play. Just didn't come out huge this time. Oh, Hades, though. He might be able to get a free frag onto Sean Gez. He's going to go through this smoke, finds him in the side of the head, and he's going to be fast on the flank now. They are aware that it's going to be a play into B. We get the entry from Freakazoid, but Hades is coming in. The problem is there's no kit. I don't know if there's one on the floor on B, but at the moment, there is no kit for any of these guys. We might see this be all over at the moment. Glorians is going to go in by the smoke with the Famas, takes the first frag, and that's it. Freakazoid finishes it off. 16-13 to 13 and Cloud9. They had a really shaky, really shaky Inferno here. Very, very shaky, but they managed to pull through and uh, show some class. So that's really, really good to see. And that's going to, of course, be awesome because we're going to get a third map, guys. Yeah, I think Tempo Storm just made a few mistakes there, which really turned the wheel back in favor of Cloud9. Um, but so you have to wonder if they're going to feel dejected now or if they're going to ha have the head screwed on because they could have closed that out. There was, they had huge potential to close that out 2-0 after such a monster T side. They just couldn't hold it together on the T side when it counted. And they've let Cloud9 back into this game now. They've, they're going to go into the third map with all the momentum on their side and no momentum, just failure yeah. in the hands of Tempo Storm. I, th I think Tempo Storm will feel energized regardless because I think they would never expect to win this match. I think it's one of those spots where it's like, well, we've got nothing to lose. And Cloud9, you guys have everything to lose because you should you should always get deep into this tournament. Whereas for them to get you know beat Cloud9 and uh, and get deeper, that's that's an awesome result there for them. Mm. So I think they would be up against CLG um, if that would happen. Actually, I, so I, I would hope to think they'd have a more winning mindset than that. So I, I in my opinion, I feel like they're going to be a bit flustered now. Yeah, we'll, we shall see. Time will tell. Dust2 will be coming up here for the HTC Reborn Invitational Cup. So guys, stay with us. We'll be right back after the break with map number three.